This is Money Exchange with Andrew Barnett. Hello, I'm Andrew Barnett and welcome to Money Exchange where we keep you up to date each week on everything you need to know about currency markets. December is nearly upon us and we may be about to enter the most volatile trading month we have seen on currency markets in years. Two of the world's biggest central banks are set to announce complete opposite interest rate decisions and this has the potential to substantially shift global financial markets. Tonight you'll learn what the likely outcomes are for currencies and just how far they may rise or fall in the coming weeks and months. We'll cross to Brisbane to chat with a former Australian test cricketer who's been making steady progress transitioning from the cricket pitch to the currency business. He spun the packies out for five for 110 at the Sydney test a few years back. We'll ask him if the currency markets have been sending him for a spin. Christmas is well on the way and if you're heading overseas for the holiday season, anytime soon, David Brown from Best Exchange Rates joins us from London to tell us who has the best travel car deals and why you should never exchange your money at the airport. If you've got a currency question you'd like answered, you can email me anytime via andrew at moneyexchangetv.com. But before we discuss any of that, let's take a look at this week's headlines. Treasurer Scott Morrison has again indicated some superannuation tax concessions need to be pared back. He says superannuation should do no more than provide an adequate retirement, floating a suggestion of using limits to ensure concessions are tailored to replace 70% of pre-retirement earnings. Although ASPA CEO Paul N. Vamos has commended Scott Morrison's comments, saying super is not a wealth accumulation tool. Australian business investment fell a massive 9.2% in the September quarter, smashing expectations. The Aussie dollar dropped sharply on the official figures, showing capital expenditure fell by 20% in the year to September. For sporting professionals transitioning from their chosen sport into the real world after they retire usually means getting a real job. But our next guest has decided to try his hand at professional currency investing and from all accounts he's recently been making some steady progress. Nathan Horitz, former Aussie Test spinner, joins us from our Brisbane studio. G'day Nathan and welcome to Money Exchange. G'day AB, thanks mate. You've no doubt experienced pressure playing <laughs> Test cricket for Australia. How does walking out at Lords for an Ashes series compare to trading your own money in the biggest financial market in the world? Uh, look, I, I don't reckon there's too, too much difference with the nerves, to be honest. You know, look, um, the difference with cricket is I, I have a lot of faith in what I'm doing when I'm trading. Um, you know, look, you've got no control over the market, so the, the nerves definitely kick in. I guess it's that uh, antici anticipation of an expectation in financial markets that you don't have versus cricket where you train hard, work hard and perhaps uh, you've got a higher probability of success in some cases. Yeah, that's it. You know, look, um, you spend probably 15, 20 years of your life um, putting a lot of blood, sweat and tears into it and then currency trading, um, you know, I've, I've been doing it now for about 18 months and uh, I really enjoy it, but it definitely is a, a really exciting challenge and, and as you said, you know, look, you, you're trying to make the probabilities a bit more in your favour. <clears throat> so tell us, Nathan, before we get on to the, more of the currency stuff, is it true, can you, can you shatter the myth for us, are all Aussie Test cricket stars mad punters? <laughs> Um, I don't know if I can shatter the myth. Um, look, I, I know a few of the boys do enjoy um, a little bit of a punt here and there, and I know a few have actually got part owners and race racehorses and greyhounds and that sort of thing. I'm definitely not a punter. Um, you know, look, I, I I don't think I'm any good at that, but uh, look, I, I think you'd, you'd find a lot of professional sportsmen are. I know that in, in our industry, in in uh, in currency circles, and a lot of my banking colleagues, they certainly enjoy a little bit of the punt and I think there's a it's reasonable to say that to be a successful investor you have to have a little bit of, uh, of punting mentality in you otherwise you just wouldn't get your money out of your pocket but your figures on the cricket field were incredibly Im impressive how are you going this year with your currency trading are you happy where you're at so far this year 
I am, I am getting happier. Um, I think you know you'd be the first to say I was probably the black sheep of the group of our, um, you know, our LTG group. But uh, I've definitely improved over the last six months. Um, you know, I'd have to say probably double digit returns over those six months and, and enjoying it. And probably I think the thing I found the hardest was just the, the discipline. And I, and I know coming from a sporting background, everyone would think it would be easy to, to transition across. But um, I found it really tough being able to accept you know, not getting a trade right, um, you know, considering that I was doing everything that I was supposed to. And then, you know, look, that just catastrophizes and, and make things worse. But uh, definitely over the last few months, the market has been a, a bit easier to trade, I guess, you, guess if you can say that, but uh, the results are starting to come forward. Fantastic. Well, the market has been trending in the last few weeks, and I can tell you, Ritz, if you've got double-digit returns for this year, you're doing a lot better than most people who have got super funds and managed funds. But let me ask you this. Are there any similarities between professional sport and professional trading? Are you finding that there are any similarities at all, or are they just miles apart altogether? No, look, I definitely think there are a lot of things the same. Um, you know, look, I'm probably more of a day trader with the indexes, the ASX and the, and the FTSE and that sort of thing. And my day is exactly the same uh, day in, day out. I set up, I have a, a certain routine about 45 minutes before the market opens. I then trade, then review my trade to see how I go and then do that in the afternoon. Do that tomorrow, keep going. Um, you know, and in cricket, it's exactly the same thing. You, you rock up on a Monday, you got gym, Tuesday, nets so you know those sort of disciplines are the, the same sort of you know i guess functionality um but you know look the nerves are always there um you know and i think that's probably the one thing that i do enjoy about trading it creates a lot of nervous tension and, and it's probably the closest thing that you get as an athlete leaving that high and low of, of professional sport um in in the trading atmosphere so how much time per day would you spend on your trading at the moment are we talking about an hour or two, a few minutes. What's what's the time frame that uh, you're spending? Um, I'd definitely say about two hours. Um, I'd say about an hour in the morning, an hour at night, and that sort of encompasses um, set up, trade, and review um, for each index I trade. Um, you know, I I'd probably with the the currency markets, I'd spend probably 15 minutes just looking at where the the market is, what news happened overnight, what news is coming up. You know, sort of what direction, um, you know, everything's sort of going. And I just, just keep a bit of a tab, tab on it that way. I find when I first started, I was spending probably way too long looking at markets, looking at trends, looking at resistance and support and all that sort of jargon uh, to start with. And I ended up confusing myself. And I think the most uh, simple thing was just to keep it simple. Um, and that, that has helped me at the end. Uh, you're dead right. Keeping it simple uh, and just managing the risk is the most important thing. Now, you've been a part of my professional trader graduate program this year. Yep. I can't let you escape tonight without asking you. <laughs> We've got a big announcement uh, next week on Thursday from the European Central Bank and then on the 18th of December, the US Fed. What are your thoughts with respect to what they might do? Are you anticipating a, a lower euro and, and trading in that direction? or? Uh, is there a different uh, Nathan Horrocks spin on things? No, nah, look, I'm um, with the with the currencies. I'm pretty conservative in, in my thinking, and you know, look, I pretty much agree with what's going to happen. Um, you know, the the Fed dropping rates, and, and along with the euro, I think you know I've got a few positions with the euro in the US and the, and the euro pound and stuff like that. So. I'm hoping for that. Um, you know, look, the market is, is heading toward that way. The, the American market is quite strong at the moment. And um, look, I guess the European market at the moment, with everything going on overseas, is probably a little bit volatile, but um, you know, it's trending in, the right, trending in the right way. So you're a Harvey Bay boy. How do, you, how do you find the currency markets? Is it something that you were interested in through your cricket career, sitting on the sidelines, uh, waiting to go out to bat? in the change rooms, watching the financial markets. How did you get involved in financial markets? Um, I've always been interested in shares. I, I never traded them uh, while I was playing or anything like that. My father um, made a lot of money in shares and um, he tried to get me into it and I just probably didn't have the patience to be fair. And then, um, yeah, I was sort of coming to the end of my cricket and just wanted to find something that, you know, I enjoy working with computers and numbers and obviously most people enjoy money as well. So. I, um, you know, I saw. I actually saw your article in the paper um, about 18 months ago, two years ago, um, and I, you know, just went 
uh, online and, and listen to you talk and I really enjoyed listening to you at the start there and I, I was pretty much hooked straight away um, just seeing the market move and you know, I've, I've got a pretty addictive nature with that sort of stuff so and then just just followed it and then just things have branched out from there. Mate, it's always great to uh, chat with you and all the best with the currency trading for the rest of the year. Double digit returns, congratulations. I look forward to hearing more about your success. Thanks, AB. Cheers, mate. Don't go away because after the break we'll have more updates on global currency markets and what the US dollar and euro are likely to do in the coming weeks and months. Don't go away.